I think we are live right now. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Happy Thursday. Linda is with me to read chat today. Yes, I am. Hello. Hey, Laura. What's this? Laura's first. <laughs> Hi, KK. <laughs> Glennis is here as well. Everybody got, ah, Margie. Margie was probably in, got kicked out. Somebody else got in first. I'm just glad you were able to get back in, Margie. That's all. And I forgot to check where my camera is even pointing. So we'll do that in just a second here. Uh, let's see. Can't have the Margie Laura show without you. Yes, that is true. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are awesome. Let's see what else is down here time to start the music it's time to light the lights it's time to get things started on the margie and laura show tonight oh that was good laura you know what? sometime we'll have to bring the two of them on even if even just audio <laughs> that'll be a hoot that would be a hoot wouldn't it hi kathy how are you kathy is here um, people are coming in um stream art or youtube is bringing people in slowly one by one okay so um i was hoping to have some paper cut uh beforehand and i don't so here is one little sample we're gonna make some more but this is one little sample of the envelope and i realized that this paper is not very good paper to show oops hang on a second i gotta check my auto focus because it's been a problematic child again that looks good looks there we good. Go. okay um because it makes it difficult to see but can you see that it has this little thing right here little thing that it fits into it's folded in with the pocket or the envelope, so it folds right into there and it, it closes itself. And the whole envelope opens, so it could be it could be put in a journal and used um, cute in a journal and be journaling space on its own. Hi, Debbie. Debbie Ragsdale is here. Hello, hello. So, um, I need to cut some paper. Now, if we, um, if we get through that one, and wait a second, I gotta turn this off or down or something. Okay, if we get through that one, and you want another one, I can show you this one. Ooh, pretty little envelope. I really like this one. I haven't put a closure on it yet. You could put a tiny piece of Velcro or something that holds that down but the flower is folded right into the flap. And I really like that. This is really pretty on solid colors. And there's actually two or three different ways to make this same envelope, um, two or three different ways to fold it to get the exact same thing, which kind of cracks me up. But um, this could also be used as journaling space. Ooh, nice. there. One of them folds more like um, an envelope envelope where you could stick things in. This one is kind of more like journaling space because you kind of have an open end there, but you could tuck something in here and here and then fold it up. And then when somebody opens it up, they have stuff tucked in, in the two um, spots right there. So that one's really cute. Looks like uh, ruching. Oh, this looks like ruching. So, yeah. We just started our two o'clock live. Oh, I forgot. No, no, you didn't tell me, and it's not on the calendar. And yes, it so, is. yes, it is. Hi, <laughs> Hello, <laughs> it's Linda. She's oh, chat for me today. Hi, Linda. Yeah, no, I just, I just got up and put those things away, and thought I'd come in here and see how you're doing. Okay. I'm just doing my thing. Cool. So. Hi, Dawn. I see that Dawn came in. I mean, to be careful, it'll be like one of those maps you never get to fold flat again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's look at, um, yeah, how do we fold it? <laughs> I'm going to cut a couple of other pieces to use here. Let me clarify where I said paper, not cardstock. Light cardstock will work just fine. 
it just gets a little more difficult with um, heavier cardstock. So, so to do the first one, oh, go ahead. You speak up anytime you need to. Is that you trying to talk? <laughs> no. Okay. Sometimes I hear sounds, and I don't know if it's in my house or just you know weird sounds, or if it's you trying to speak. <laughs> No, I went to get some more water. That's what oh, sorry. <laughs> so the first one, we want to start with a square. The square can be any size. Um, I would recommend to learn it that you don't do anything less than a six by six square. That this one was a six by six. And then if you want to go even smaller than that um, later, did I just... Yeah, that is That's if right. even smaller than that later, you can, but to learn it, this is kind of, you know, about the right size, small enough. I, or this one is eight by eight. I just did one in eight by eight. Um, I'm going to cut this one eight by eight. I think it'll be easier for you to see, but um, um, let's see here. Since this only goes to six inches, then I will come down here and find a pencil and or a pen and I will mark eight right there. You can still use little paper trimmers to cut larger pieces. You do it all the time. Yeah, you can make these teeny tiny too, but um, it's kind of, it's easier to learn on a slightly larger one. Um, six by six is still a cute one envelope. All right. And um, so then we need an eight this direction as well. Dawn says she, Dawn says she has a box of origami paper. Oh, cool. Origami paper works too. Um, you might find that this actually works better with your scrapbooking paper than origami paper just because it's a, a little thicker than origami paper and will actually... Um, hold itself together better. But origami paper being thinner, um, also will fold flatter. So I didn't, I've got some origami paper and I've never tried it with that. Okay, so we're gonna start with a, let's see if we can get rid of that glare. Sylvia, Sylvia is here. Hi, Sylvia. Waiting, lurking, otherwise occupied with projects, resisting the addiction of more envelopes, supportively watching. Oh, Sylvia, you got to make this cute little envelope. <laughs> um, daisies. Yes. Daisies on one side and polka dots on the other side. Very pretty. All right. So I'm starting with an eight by eight. You might use an eight by eight or a six by six. That's you know probably good size to start with. And we don't need to measure um, other than to make sure it's a square. You don't need any glue or anything. It's just folding the envelope, which is one reason I love origami. So we're going to turn it on the diamond and we are going to fold it in half point to point. So that should, if I get the point right up there, that should come out point right here and it should come out point right here. Okay. And let's see, I just had a bone folder here. I'm gonna give it a little crease just because we know we want it to be able to lay down flat and not keep popping open. Bonnie and Margie are here. Hey, Bonnie, lurking. Try, <laughs> try a one by one. Later, Margie, later. <laughs> if I do a one by one, nobody will be able to see it. <laughs> so. I was trying to make it uh, small enough that it's uh, like a size I would like, but large enough that um, you can still see what I'm doing. So um, who is making with us today? Is anybody? Is anybody making with us? Come on, grab a square piece of paper and make with us. You can do it. <laughs> okay, so we folded it on the diagonal in half. Now we're going to take the top. This kind of silicone thing is kind of bugging me. So I'm gonna move that, I'm gonna come over here. I didn't even check my my camera, I guess. Is it straight? I guess it's straight enough, huh? Okay, okay. so 
Now we're going to take the top and we are going to bring that point down to the center. Glennis is working with you. Yay, Glennis! Thank you. <laughs> uh, Glennis, my save saber. At least one person's making with me. Okay, so I'm folding the top down. I figured if I had two different colors or, um, that it'd be easier to see. So fold it in half, fold the top down. Okay, and now Yes. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. Slight interruption there. Okay. So now we are going to um, fold the left and the right in. And how we're going to do that is by, let's see, is this one, why is that not? Um, okay. Sorry. I should have made a bunch of these right before to make sure that I was remembering exactly right. Okay. Um, I want to take the center point here and this point here, and I want to divide it into thirds. And so I want to go to about a third, and I'm going to bring this point over to about a third. About is fine. Don't measure and get exact. About is perfectly fine, okay? Okay, so I went from the center point to the outside. I just took this into about into thirds. There's about third. So I folded this one. So the point is about a third. See, the third will come up different every time. It doesn't matter. It's just kind of a general. And once that's there, we're going to gauge it off itself. So you, you really don't need to um, measure. Okay, then we're going to take this point and fold it back. And we're going to fold it back at this point here. So we're taking the point on the bottom, folding it back on itself. And how you know where to fold it is on this center point of the folded down piece. Make sense? Let's see. I think I didn't get... That folded in up. There we do. I need to bone folder that. Get a little thick. So it'll stay and you can see. Okay, so I folded this over, dividing this in thirds, about a third, and then I folded it back. And you'll see why it doesn't really matter if you're, you know, a hair off there, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that when you fold it back, you fold in it back to the point. I'm not, I'm a hair off the point and I'm not even gonna worry about it. Okay, so I folded it back to the point. And now I'm going to fold the left side over and I'm just going to match this one with the right one right there. So I don't have to measure, I don't even have to figure a third. I'm gonna just match it to the right one that's already folded and then crease that one. Oh, Candy here. Hey, Candy. She got out of the swimming pool for a minute. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> got to utilize every moment she can this week. Okay, so is everybody who's making it with me that far, this far, thus far? <laughs> Are you with me thus far? And everybody's saying hi to Candy, so it'll take <laughs> Hey, Candy. Candy. <laughs> Shay Louise, the peer pressure, stopping what I'm doing to comply. Yay, Sylvia! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Love that. Okay, so we folded this over. We folded it back on itself at the point here. We folded the left one over to meet the point, right? Now we're going to... Go underneath, lift this one up and open this one. Set the, the left one down on top of it. This one has not been folded. And this one, you're gonna put your finger in and right where they meet here, just kind of pick it up 
and push it down. Jubri is here. Hey, Judy. Good to see you. Okay, did you get that? Did you get that? So we folded this one back on itself. We folded this one to meet it. And you see why that third doesn't matter exactly where it is? Because it doesn't matter. It could, as long as when you bring this over, you match it to that. It doesn't matter if it's a hair this way or that way. Then lift it up, fold this one down. Lift this one right where, put your finger right where they meet. Lift it up and then squish it straight down, making you a little beak shaped pocket right there. Okay, and then you can fold the top down and you see where you've got this right here. Easy to fold it down on that. Let me just do it this way. I'll use that as my guide. Fold it that way. And if I fold it straight, it should line up. So this would go straight into my little beak-like uh, tuck spot there. I love this. <laughs> this is really cute. Now, there is one other variation, too, that's um, not. Uh, oh, no, this is Linda. Linda, and you can't see her. Uh, she's watching chat for us, Judy. That is Linda Cook. Um, here's another variation. You don't have to change anything. Just open the, the top flap back up that I already squished up there. The variation is to take this little pointy beak right here and fold it right in half at those points, fold it down in <laughs> without killing it. Not doing a good job of that. Let's see here. Might be easier to do before I put it down. Uh, I'm, I, paper's probably a little thick. It's not rolling. You know how you get paper to roll till you hit the right spot? It's not rolling. It's kind of, it's light cardstock, but it might be a little thick too. Okay. So there is, there's a variation where you can fold that down and then you can see some of the other color right there. Linus would like to know, what was the purpose of the fold on the first point? The fold on the first point here, to show you exactly where to fold the left one over to meet it. Yeah, by doing that, yeah, by doing that, everything lines up perfectly. Okay, then there's even a, I guess you could call it a variation, a third variation, not really a variation, just a little, um, oh, those are too thick. I need some... I need some thin scissors. I think I've got. Oh, maybe those will work. It's kind of a variation. Once you fold this down, if you like this one, you can go right here to the center and do a tiny little clip. And then you can fold those back like they're little tuxedo or collar things. I don't like that because they just look like they're not meant to be. But what I do like is when I make that little clip, then come over to the right and to the left. And so you're clipping out a tiny little V. Oh, that's cute. That tiny little V is really cute. Yeah. I like it. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah. Oh. I like that tiny little V. That works really well. So you can see that you could open the whole thing and use it as journal space, or you could tuck something in here as an envelope. Yeah, when you fold this one over, the point of that is just to, to line this one up and know that you have, you have it exactly in alignment. Otherwise, you're guessing. And when you try to guess, like I did the first time I made it, what I ended up with was... Um, these weren't exactly the same. And so then my whole, uh, flap was off and, you know, 
it just helps you get it exact. So even if you don't fold it at exactly one third, when you do the, the right side, it doesn't matter as long as the left one lines up with the right one exactly. Did so, I say no one was here? Who? I, I'm sorry, couldn't hear you. Dawn. Oh, hi, Dawn. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dawn was here. I think I said hi to her already. She okay. was here a little bit ago. Sorry. I, I, no, that's okay. Maybe when I was looking at chat, that's probably why you didn't say it, because I said it. <laughs> so I think this is cute with two different colors um, of paper, but you can do it with um, just white on the back as well. Like this little reindeer one for Christmas. I did, I think I will ink this one so that I can ink that little V cut out so that you see it. It's hard to see without it. This one has a white back, so this is a cute one to use as journaling paper. So that's super easy, isn't it? Yes, as long as we can keep checking back. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Yeah. If you do it enough that you can remember the folds. <laughs> oh, Margie has the instructions in a paper folding book. She has. Ooh, nice. Okay. Let's see. This would be, I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, this one, this one, I did not fold the, then I had to go back and I've got some extra lines in it because I had to go back and adjust it because I didn't fold the right side back on itself and and so even my even my little thing here is a little ski wampus it's bigger on this side than that side um yeah that's what happens when you don't fold it back so you can match the left side up perfectly exactly so this can be done with any size as we said so we can try what is this one this is four let's try a four by four that's getting pretty small, pretty small. All right, so. Don likes your paper. Actually, I'm gonna get the polka dots be the outside this time. Thank you, Don. I am trying to use up some of the stuff that's been in my stash for years with some of these fun projects. Uh, may not be a perfect square. Maybe that's my problem. You know, yeah, it helps if you can measure and cut straight for a square. I mean, there's hardly any measuring and cutting on this. <laughs> All right. So what I have a problem with is when I fold this down, is is my point exactly in the middle? Because if it's not, the whole thing's going to be skewampus. So to make sure that it is, I just put the bottom of this on a line and then I'll put the top point on a line going the opposite direction. And now I know it's squared up. And so if I fold this down and the point is on the same line that the point up here is on, then I know it's it's straight. Because that's clever. Well, for me, that's hard. I have folded them and ended up with just a little bit this way or just a little bit that way. Sometimes with the pattern, you just can't see. You can't tell if it's straight. The pattern is visually, you know, distracting or impairing or whatever. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to go over here and divide this into about three. Um, it's kind of tiny, but we'll do this. Fold that over to about a third. And fold that down. Did it all go? Yep, it all did. Okay. So make sure my point's still down on the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to fold it back to the point. This is, this is the whole purpose of that, folding it back to the point right here in the center. Again, every... Every one of these that isn't doesn't seem like it's you know important or a big deal. The whole purpose of that particular move is to keep it um, straight in alignment, so that you actually end up with an envelope, not a cyborg. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to fold the left side to meet this point. 
So as long as I make sure that those are exact, it's still going to work. Oh, that's so cute and tiny. We love the tiny, tiny things. I love the little tiny ones. I know. We all do. Margie's queen of making teeny tiny things. Okay, so I opened that up, folded this back, and now I want to get my finger in between there. But I want to lay it down enough to know where is that center point. And then I'm going to lift it up. The smaller it is, the harder it is to do. Lift it up at that center point and then just smash it straight down. There we go. But I'm going to go ahead and open it up a bit and I'm going to fold that little diamond in half. So I can match up those two corners because I do like that version. Bring it back here. Fold that down. Maybe I went a bit too far because it seems, there we go. Um, I did. I folded something. I folded something, ski wampus, but that's okay. All right. And then I'll feel where this is. I will fold it up, give it a crease, come down. And, you know, like everything else we do in paper crafting, it doesn't have to be perfect. Perfect is boring. Yeah. See, my little fold, my this thing, my this guy is a little. It works. A little off. It still works. Yeah. It just means that I didn't uh, line that up right. So no big deal. It'll still work. As long as it works, that's all that matters, right? And then if you want to cut that tiny little V out of there. There we go. Cute little envelope. Four and a half by four and a half works fine. So this one was four. Glennis did four and a half. Nice. Thumbs up. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you for remembering. Yeah, um, Debbie, you can use you can use um, single sided paper. This first one that I did with the reindeers is single sided, and that allows when you open it up that you could use this as journaling space. You can also take single sided and if you don't want it to be journaling space, but you don't want it to be white, put a stencil down and then just do, do a, um, with your distress ink, go over that stencil in some color that is coordinating with your front. So you're making your own pattern on the back. That works quite well as well. <clears throat> um, that one is backwards. Let's see is yeah this one was a little screwy too because I tried to do it without using some of those steps where you're lining lining things up and that's what I found Glennis that there's a reason for doing those <laughs> so that you fold them exactly where you should so in the end, everything lines up. So this would be a cute one to mass make and have a bunch of different sizes, um, different patterns, all ready to go, easy to stick one. You know, envelopes are great in journals, but you don't wanna put, I don't know, I don't, we get bored. We don't wanna put the same envelope in three or four different places in the same journal. So if you could put three or four different envelopes in and each one of them looked different or folded different, that's a little more fun, isn't it? Yes. I agree. I'm gonna grab another piece here and make it slightly smaller than the eight what was, um, I did eight, so I'm gonna make it seven and a half so I can do a four and a half, like Glennis said, worked really well. So let's see here. 
first I'm going to have to mark again. Um, let's see, that's eight, so seven and a half. I hope that gives me four and a half. Sylvia, did you make an envelope? <laughs> Poor Sylvia. Peer pressure didn't make it an envelope. I think the pressure got to where I haven't seen her for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, that's because she's busy making an envelope. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, there's seven and a half. So, Glennis, what did you do? Three by three or three and a half by three and a half? Three by three. Yeah, the smaller they get, the cuter they are, huh? Just teeny tiny. They work well if you can fold. fold. And I'll, I'll tell you, the smaller you go, the easier it is to do with paper, not cardstock, even light cardstock. Um, let's see here. I don't know if there's a way to make sure that the flowers are right side up. I don't know if it matters. Ooh, I like that side too. That's pretty. Mm. So if I get the thing straight to start with, I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> so. I agree. All right. So I'm lining up here. I'm putting that on a line. I'm bringing this one back to that line. No chatting, everybody's folding, huh? Uh, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, guys? <laughs> Anybody have a question? You're, uh, you're not keeping Linda very busy. <laughs> yeah, I could do this myself now. Yeah, you can actually grab a piece of paper. You could do it. We can watch chat together. This is not a tough one to watch chat. Some of them are much more in depth. I've already shown you, you know, the instructions now, so I can help you watch chat. But yeah, if everybody's busy folding, and it's probably not one that really needs a lot of questions. So, Laura is admiring the paper. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, um, some of those that I really, really like that have been sitting in my shelf and I haven't been using because I really, really like them. Been here forever and I really need to use them. So I'm gonna use them for some pretty envelopes like this. Let's see. Debbie loves the paper too. Ah, oh, thanks. Um, I know that this is one of those paper packs that I pulled out before when I used one and we all liked it. So I pulled it out and showed you, but um, there's a couple, there's a couple of maybe three or four that are similar to this that are just gorgeous. And I am going to, as soon as we get through the clearance sales and I start um, reordering stock, I'm going to try to get some of these for us in these are all from the same from the same paper pack. So they're they're like bright colors, but they're not. They're soft and they're just pretty. And these are not even my favorites from the pack. These were just the ones that had the good enough designs on both sides to be able to do. I love that one. Yeah, I do like that. To be able to do both sides. So yeah, I will, I'm going to try to get um, some of these that in the store. That's a pretty one too. There's a lot of them that have the, the wonderful background and then the flowers. It's not, you know, just flowers, but they get these awesome backgrounds with them as well. So, might be Kay and Company, if I remember right. I'd have to pull out the, the whole pack. Oh, one. Sylvia, on. Sylvia got one done. Sylvia got one done? Whoop, whoop. It's cute. Easy. I get it. <laughs> you get an A for that. Bless your little heart, Sylvia. You get an A for that. <laughs> you absolutely do. You deserve oh, I can't, an a. I can't wait to see it. 
<laughs> I deserve that A. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to fold. No, I'm not. Not till I get that down there. Okay. Yep, they are easy. Do you guys want to learn this one? Same day. Don't want to overload you. You know, I don't do. brains on other things too. <laughs> that one. Okay. Yeah, I should. Uh, it shouldn't take me long to remember how to do that one. Oh my goodness. Holding this little guy in. I like that and I feel like it reinforces, gives reinforcement to that little um, holder there. It's really pretty. These are fantastic. I, love I do like not having to make another closure as much as I love making you know, closures, something that it slips under or a little belly band that it slips through or whatever. Um, I Sometimes I just don't want to take the time to do that. Put together a quick envelope where you don't have to do a closure. It comes with it. I, I don't do I need you to show that bottom part again. Close. Okay. Let's see. What's, this one is four and a half. So let me cut a four and a half. See if I can show you the teeny tiny one. <laughs> okay, so we put our paper on the diamond and we fold it in half. I know you're already past this, but I got to get caught up to you. Fold it on the diamond should give us a perfect point on both sides. Okay, then I'm going to put my point on a line and my bottom of the triangle on a line. That helps me be able to bring this point back to the same line and know that I folded it straight. Because if that's crooked, everything will be crooked. Okay. All right. Is it from there, Don? From here on? Okay. So now we're going to take the center point to the outside point, and we're going to divide this into thirds, roughly. It really doesn't have to be exact. So the whole point is just to get um, some place to guide off of. So if I divide this into about thirds, I'm going to say that's probably close, probably about a third. Dawn says yes, that's what she needs. Okay, cool. So fold that one down. Can you get in a little closer? Is there a way for you to do that? Oh, there you go. Okay. okay. I'll do that. Okay. So if I go from the center point to the outside point, in your in your mind, just kind of divide this into thirds. Don't measure it. Just divide it into thirds and fold this one over to about one third. And where it is exactly isn't important. It's just a way to give us um, a guide, something to guide off of. Except that, well, I will say this as you get to the tinier ones. See how this folds over this point here? From the end to that point, and then from that point to this end, we don't want this half to be bigger than that half. So I need to take my third, which actually is probably bigger than a third. I kind of overshot that and come back a bit. Yeah, I did overshoot it the first time. I've been used to making big ones. Okay, and it's no big deal. All right, so I'm back to, if this is the center point, that would be about a third, pretty close. Okay, so because I don't want this half here, this half, sorry, the left half of this to be way bigger than the right half, and you'll see why. 
Okay, so I'm gonna fold this, I'm gonna fold this back at the point. And you know it's straight because you're lining up the bottom with, I'll pick this up close to the camera. Okay, so I'm taking the right side and I'm folding it back on itself and I'm choosing to fold it right at the point. And I will know it's straight. That is not. I will know it's straight when I've lined up the bottom edge of both of those and they are straight, then it will be folded straight. Now you can see that point is where we folded. This is why we don't want from the fold out to be longer than from the fold out to the right, because if you fold it back on itself and it's longer, it's going to go over the edge and that won't work. And so if you truly keep this to about a third, it will always work. I overshot that. I was out to here, which is probably almost a half. So if you do it, just do what I did and pull it back a little bit and make a new, a new fold. You can't even see where I had the fold before. Okay, Dawn, are you with me to here? <clears throat> and then yes, I'll yes. open this up and get um, Bonnie's picture. Okay, so then we're gonna fold the left side and where we measure that is making the left point meet the right point folded. And Going that's the whole purpose for folding the right one is so that it's a guide for the left one. Glenn is also sent a picture. Okay, cool. Give me just a minute to get through this. Um, I don't want to stop in the middle of instructions and then I will pull them up. Okay. So folding the left side to point to meet the right point. Those two points meet right here. Then you are perfect. Are you to that point, Don? Probably are. Yes, yes. And yes. open it up just enough to open up the right one. We're going to open that one up and lay it down flat. And then we're going to put the left one back down. And now, let me show you an easier way, especially the tinier you get. The tinier you get, the harder it is to put your finger in there and smash it flat. So the easy way to do that is to bend this one back on itself, just like you just did the right one. Bend the left one back on itself, making it bend right where the two meet. It's kind of hard to do in the air, but I can do that. Right where these two meet, right here in the V. If you bend that back on itself, and then make sure the bottom lines up with the bottom. It will be straight. Okay, we folded the right one back on itself. Now if you fold the left one back on itself, then you know you've got your center closure straight. And then just lift it up to the center, open it up, and smash it down point to point in a diamond. That's perfect. That makes sense. That's a little easier. The tinier you get to fold that left piece back. And then where you've got this piece inside is where you'll fold. So it's easy just to set it down on the ground and put your finger right there and give it just a, you know, a bend so that when you come back and fold it, it goes right where it's supposed to go. And I fold it over the top, always just making sure that it's it will go in it and it will go not too far, not too shallow. And then there you go. Now, if you want then to fold that, you'll need to open this back up just enough to take this tiny little diamond and just fold the diamond in half on itself, fold it underneath to on itself to make that triangle that half a diamond. And then just bring it right back, smash it down good. 
And then if you want to cut the little V in it, you can do that too. Or you might just put a little piece of bling right there. Little ornament. They're so cute, aren't they? All right, so let's take a look at some of the ones y'all are making. Laura and Margie are having a conversation, but I'm not quite understanding it. <laughs> oh, look how cute. Bonnie's already decorated hers. Wow, Bonnie, you are way ahead. These are fast. That is cute. Some washi tape on there, a little bit of music uh, paper. And look at that butterfly. That's pretty. You know, take one of one little um, rhinestone bling and put it right there on that uh, flap that it tucks into. That would be super cute. That would be super cute. Okay, so that's Bonnie's. Let's check out Glennis's. Ooh, Glennis is doing, oh, I recognize that paper. That is pretty. So she's made a bunch of a green and dark green and light green stripe ones, different sizes. And then there's some botanical ones. I love that paper. That's one of my favorite paper pads. Those are pretty. And they go really nicely together. Very pretty together. Good job, Glennis. Those are awesome. And... Ooh, look at Sylvia's. That is very pretty, too. Pretty. Yeah. Same colors as mine, the pink and the orange um, and the flowers. They look really nice together. And then Dawn. Oh, yeah. It, oh, wow. Okay, Dawn, is that origami paper? It looks like origami paper. It almost looks like vellum, but then I can tell it's not. I think that's origami paper. That is really pretty turned out quite well. Good way to use up book pages too. Yes, Laura. That's a great idea. Linda, are you making one? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to grab some paper and make one. <laughs> I was. Paper's in another, everything's in another room. So. Oh, uh -huh. well, you can always go grab you some paper. I will you. though tomorrow. You know I will. Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> but if you wanted to go grab some paper, I would not be offended for you if you walked away for a minute. <laughs> I did. I had to feed my cat and my dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So um let's make a couple of more of those just so we ingrain it in our brains. And so we have a little bit of a mass make stash since today is mass make. Because we got plenty of time. It's um, 10 minutes to three. So at three o'clock, then I'll show you the other one. And we'll have an hour to make a little stash of that one. Okay, so this one is a four by four. What is that one? That is a uh, almost four by four it needs to be square. It can be any size square. So if it's like this one, three and seven eighths, I'll take the four side and just cut that to three and seven eighths and then it's a square. As long as it's square, it'll work. Okay, get the branding strip off of this one. So I have a couple questions for everybody. Um, you've all seen, maybe I should pull up the picture. Give me just one second here. Four and almost a half. <laughs> you see, this is a good way to use small scraps that aren't exactly at three or four, four and a half or five or eight or anything. They're just kind of whatever size they are. As long as it's square, it'll work. Okay, those are not square. Let's see, I think I would like something of a different color. I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna make all of these today, but I'm gonna like to do one or two of this. So we make a lot of books, different styles. 
traveler's notebooks, the hard ba- hardback um, <laughs> and hard spine notebook or books like we just did. What's so funny? Laura says, how much paper could a crafter hoard if a crafter could hoard paper? <laughs> <laughs> like, we, would, we would be so surprised. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> we haven't talked about that before. <laughs> I don't think anybody here would be surprised. <laughs> we can hoard a lot of paper. Funny thing is, is the paper just keeps getting prettier and prettier and prettier. And so I've decided I just don't need to keep hoarding it. I need to start using some that I've been hoarding. And I can, then I can hoard the new stuff for a while while I'm using some of the old stuff that's still very pretty. And um, everything will be pretty instead of just using, we don't want to use ugly paper and hoard the good stuff, right? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, Sylvia, more, more, more. How do you like it? How do you like it? <laughs> I love that, Sylvia. That was awesome. Okay. So when I uh, refer to an album, this is an album. And an album, an album is like the base. It's it's a hard uh, cover. It's clean lines, and so I'm I'm just saying that to differentiate between album and book, because we can make books with soft covers. We can make books with hard covers. We can make traveler's notebooks, and we make books grungy. Um, we make them, you know, neat and clean and all those things. But an album is really always um, clean lines, straight lines like this, where a lot of times, even if we're not totally grunging it up in a book, we still like to tear. We like the torn lines. We all love those. So, so when I say album, this is the type of thing I'm referring to when I say books or journals, then it's the, the other style. So how many of you would like to make an album? A clean Me. line, a straight line like this. Okay, Linda? Yes. Yay. Linda would like to. Um, is anybody interested? How many of you or any, any of you would like to make make an album? Sylvia. Sylvia will. Would like, okay. Oh, she, yes, she loves albums. Ah, the spines. Okay. Okay, yeah, and there's lots of different spines to use on those too. And um, I found a whole new take on them the other day watching somebody. And I thought that would be uh, not only if I want to make it. And then I thought, oh, but that would be a good one for um, even for a starter for us to make together for people who've never made an, made an album before. Um, it would be a it would be a good one. So so I have several things in mind if you. Anybody besides Sylvia and Linda? Uh, Laura's not sure because it, uh, trying to be perfect would drive her crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, Laura, you might like um, the this other option that I'm thinking of then, which is an album, but is not. I mean, it is an album, but it's not the traditional like this. And so it still has that really gorgeous straight line look but it's not uh, quite as fussy maybe as the as a whole album so um i'm gonna i'll make a i'll make a sample and um you can see it to see if it's something you'd want to do now you can tell well either you didn't fold it exactly straight or it's not cut to exactly a square if you're if these aren't lining up so at this point it's lining up so these should if they're not then it's probably not cut to an exact square. But I'm going to do it anyway. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> Is an album like your um, Cosmos? Uh, yes. Oh, uh, could, could you not see the one I just showed? I did see it. Was that okay. the same one? Yes, that Cosmos one. That is the Cosmos one. Yes. So you saw that video, right? I loved that video. Oh, yeah. That... Um, Margie now owns that Cosmos book. I miss it, Margie. Can you give it a pet for me, please? <laughs> oh, me too. Uh, I that that was yeah. so beautiful. Oh, thank you. That is an album. Yes. That okay. um, clean line 
um, look, that is an album, um, as opposed to maybe tearing the paper. Now, I'm not saying that you couldn't make an album and tear paper, but traditionally, those who are making albums are making them because they want to make the that a clean line. Some people use them um, as journals with journal space. A, a lot of people make them um, just for the art of making them and keep them as books on the shelf. Uh, some people make them to use for photo albums. And so you can make the photo spots throughout. I don't really do photos like that anymore, you know? So um, I just think that they're beautiful. I just like to look at them. I would do that. I would do that for my sister. And they're fun to make. And you can pick any, I mean, they're great with... Um, Stamperia, Mente, Graphic 45, Bow Bunny, literally anything, anything you want. You can use a bunch of different papers that just all go together. Like, well, like this K and Company paper pack, you could just pull this out. It's not one that you might normally think of, but you could also pick maybe um, one of your favorite Stamperia paper packs. And so then the whole thing is uh, Lady Vagabond or Sir Vagabond or House of Roses or you know, any of those. Everyone's saying yes? Yes. Okay, yes. Cool. Then we will make a plan to do an album. I hoped people wanted to, because I think that will be very fun. Very, very fun. They are fun to make. Except for the <laughs> she does. <laughs> Laura, I'm going to make, you've all seen the Cosmos ones, and the video is there, so y'all can look at that. No big deal. Um, but I'm going to make the other one um, that I thought might be a good starter one, and um, I just think it's gorgeous. And it would, it's also, it's also a little different than these standard ones. And so if you're not crazy about that one or making one, you know, that big, um, you might like, you might like this one. You might not, but you might. So I'm going to make this one. That way y'all can see both. Um, the Cosmos one that's in the video. And so if you haven't seen the Cosmos video, please go watch it. And then I'm going to make this other one because then I'm going to ask you, which one do you want to make? So you'll need to have watched the Cosmos video. Now, probably, probably the one we make won't be the exact same as the Cosmos one, but style wise, you know, you know so need you to watch that one and then i'll make the other one okay all right i got one out of that <laughs> i stopped to talk i'll i'll set these aside over here and i'll make some more of these so i've only got three four five six seven and two of them i made beforehand so <laughs> Okay, so um, paper for this other one, not square, it's rectangle, and eight and a half by 11 did not work exactly with this fold. Uh, let me see what I ended up doing with this one. This one is six by almost nine you could probably do six by nine but six by eight and three quarters is what it is exactly a, a large eight and three quarters not a shy but um yeah six by eight and three quarters and and then you could play with different um different sizes but if you took six six by nine would work if you take six by nine and you cut that down dimensionally or add to it dimensionally you can as long as you keep the ratio the same you would your rectangle would work so i've got um oh those two different colors some lighter purple some darker purple only one darker purple not very dark and some bright yellow. I thought it would be fun to make some out of here. So let's see, that's eight and a half. So that's not quite eight and three quarters. 
That would work, but I'd have to cut the sixth side down too. So I'm going to leave that six. And I will just use these other pieces for something else. This is um, like heavy copy paper. This one is. Um, I would go with a lighter paper, not a cardstock on this one. This one's much easier with a a paper paper because you've got these little tiny folds. So I'm going to mark this one at, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and three quarters. And cut it right there. So I've got six by eight and three quarters. All right, Sylvia, six by eight and three quarters or six by nine, I'm sure will work. Got to make this one. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Sylvia, you will like this one. I know this one's really pretty. So unless you make, you might already have made it. Maybe you already have these in your stash. Okay. This one, you're probably going to need to watch a little closer. I don't, maybe, should I make one first? And no, if you've got your paper, tell me if you're, tell us in the chat if you're going to make this one along with us. And then I'll do it step by step. We'll make sure everybody's with us on the step. Of course, you know, I'll always do it again. Lots of talking. Lots of talking about the album? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, who's going to make the leaf envelope? <laughs> We're all talking about the album. Nobody's paying any attention. I could have said, We're flying off to Mars. <laughs> okay, I ended up with six by six by eight and three quarters. But if you have six by nine, that will work. So, a six by eight and three eight and three quarters to nine you know length well glennis glennis is ready, glennis is ready. thank you glennis <laughs> okay this one's almost nine this is this is halfway between eight and three quarters and nine so that's like seven eighths so if you have six by nine if you have six by eight and three quarters it's gonna work yeah, yeah. We're at, we're at, and I'm are you me i'm echoing i don't know why Are you? oh i don't hear the echo hmm. i i don't i only have one oh i don't hear it anymore Gone. <laughs> well, that's weird. okay so who's doing it sylvia you're doing it glennis is ready dawn did you get your paper cut just take it and you could just do take a regular piece of copy paper to make the first one or if you have any colored copy paper, that's basically what this is, is colored copy paper. Okay, we're putting it vertically, not horizontally. We're going to fold the top right corner over to the left and line that up so that we have come to an exact point there and it's lined up right on the left side. Okay, Dawn is watching and taking notes. You might grab a paper, Dawn. I will wait. I'll do this again. I'll do it. We've got an hour. I'll do it again and again and again. Because I promise you, this one's a hard one to write down. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> a hard one to write instructions down, too. But if you do it a few times, you'll get it. So go get the paper. It's okay. I will do it again and again and again. All right. So top right corner folded down to make a perfect point here. Now bottom right corner folded up to this one. Do not overlap, but go ahead and come up to meet it. Okay, so we've got the top right corner folded. What do you call that? Folded diagonally. And then we've got the bottom right corner folded up to meet that one. We don't want them to overlap. They don't have to be touching. OK. 
Okay. All right. Then we're going to take this point here and we're going to fold it on this line. If you use this line here to fold and you go all the way across there, then the rest of it will go straight. And this point will end up right on the, the line of the top one because I've got a mark right here where to fold it, but I don't have a mark over here. So I'm showing you how to make your mark in your eye. Use this as your mark to fold it and then make sure your point matches with this and it'll be perfectly straight. Okay, so mm -hmm. I folded that over and my point is on the line or darn close. <laughs> okay. All right, then I'm going to take the top here that's sticking up at a point and I'm going to fold it right here so that it comes down alongside this one. Uh, you see why this would be so hard to write down? I tried. Yes. I, could, I, could, I just had to make it a few times. I will record a 15 minute tutorial showing how to do each of these. So it'll be short and sweet on the YouTube channel. Okay, got that. So we folded the top corner down. We folded the bottom right corner up. Then we folded that across. Point meets here. Then we folded this one down so that it meets here, right? Okay, here's what's really important. Lay that down in front of you. And let's make sure that I do this right. Lay that down in front of you and open it up. You don't have to open up this bottom right one, but just open up the two big ones. And you're going to flip it upside down, but it's really important that you pick up the side that's, the end that's near you and flip it up that way. Okay? If you flip it the wrong way, it won't work. <laughs> I tried to write down notes and I just threw up my hands and said, fine, I'll just make it a few times. Okay, so down here on the left, I have the section that was folded. Okay, I'm going to fold this point back to meet the corner. I don't want to go over the corner, just bring it back to the corner. Don't overlap. When you overlap, things won't fold. Okay. Yes, that is true, Margie. <laughs> All right, everybody there? Now you take this point and we're gonna fold it to the center line. We just folded a center line, but you've also got to fold this way so it helps keep your point to the center. It's gonna go right to that center line. Do not overlap. Just come up kind of close to it. Fold that down. Okay and then fold this again in half, coming up to the center line. But don't overlap it, just come up to the center line. If you overlap it, it's not going to fold right, it's not going to lay right when, when we get the card all put together. And then fold it one more time. In half. Every time you fold it, you're only folding it in half. Okay. And then you can undo that. And now this needs to be like this. So our folds are all there. All we do is Come back here, fold the first one down. The folds are already there, so you don't have to make new folds. The second one up, the third one down, the fourth one up, 
Third one down. Fifth one down. I can't count either. Especially I start doing stuff like this. I count and then I start counting backwards. <laughs> and suddenly I don't know where I am. So, oh man, I missed a fold. Shoot, that was my first one. So this one should be up. Well, they're already folded, so it doesn't matter which direction you go. Just go back and refold them. So folding it and then folding it and then folding it gives you all the marks that you need. And then all you have to do is go back and, and fold it the right direction. Only I think, did I, yeah, I think, I think I'm right. I think I'm right. We'll find out. It's hard to do just a tiny little bit and then stop and then pick it up right there. You know, your brain goes in a groove all the way through it, but you know, we'll make it work. Okay. Did everybody get that? It looks like it. Okay. Then we're going to turn it so that flap is up in the corner with the, all our little folds is up in the left corner. hard to be a teacher, Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> we want to leave these folded together. I find it easier to teach in person, much more difficult online. They can't speak. <laughs> and I well, don't get the They are speaking, but you can't hear them. <laughs> they're yelling at me, but I can't hear them. <laughs> no, they're not yelling. Nobody's yelling. Uh, <laughs> okay. And now with your finger holding this together, Bring it, bring it together, and your finger holding it together. You're going to fold back on this line. You've already got the marks there. Fold it back, and so your your folds got folded. Your folds got folded with it. Okay. This one's still folded here. I just didn't bother to unfold him. Fold this one over. Now we're going to bring this one up. This is the only one we haven't already folded. Bring it up to not quite to the line, but, you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch away. Give it a little space to breathe. And then bring this down. And when you do, you're going to take your leaf and just fold it in, or just, you know, like... It's not even a fold, just like curve it over the, it, the last fold is where it goes. It's like this, when, as you come down, you're gonna let it open up and just sit on top. That is so elegant. Isn't that so pretty? It's elegant. You know, it would make a beautiful yes. place, place, place. Yes. Mark. I think it is very elegant and there are several different ways to fold it. You can make it bigger. You can make it um, so it's longer like this and the, the uh, leaf covers almost all of it. So it's, you know, rectangle where this one is really square. You can make the leaf on the right side instead of the left. There's just a lot of different ways to do it. Um, I thought that this would probably be the easiest to learn first. I was thinking exactly that, Laura. She, Laura says, this is complicated, Mad. Imagine figuring this out for the first time. Yeah, exactly. I did not create this. <laughs> no. Yeah, the person, just, yeah the can you person. imagine? I know the, the Japanese that do origami, that's just amazing, all the things that they figure out to make with. That is so so artistic and so engineered. And so I'm thinking just a teeny tiny little piece of Velcro, just a teeny tiny one. It doesn't even need to be a whole piece. And then I'm thinking put a drop of purple alcohol ink on both sides, let it dry, and then just adhere that right here and right here, and that holds it down. And then just the teeny tiniest little flowers. You could put three little flowers right here uh, would be really pretty you know out of any paper like that color would be really pretty how many teeny that tiny would, that would be a stunning gift it would wouldn't it it would be really elegant to do one out of ivory or white and put it on a wedding gift oh my goodness. you know or a very special birthday would be really elegant and when you open it up you can 
you can leave it like this and then tuck. You could actually glue this down if you wanted to right here, just right where my finger is and have a tuck here and a tuck there. So they open it this way and have two tuck spots to put things in when you give it to somebody and it closes up or it could open up all the way and you could use the inside as writing. If I was giving it to somebody though, I probably would do this and use those as tuck spots. Glennis is having a little problem with this. Can't get the leaf fold. Okay. <laughs> Let's do another one. I have somebody, but I'm sure they will have the same trouble. Oh, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> believe me. Let's do this one. This, this should be really pretty too. Um, which I can't even remember which side is going to be. Let's see. Oh, Sylvia, I once made 1,000 for a party. <gasps> Sylvia made one of these? Sylvia made, well, Sylvia says, try making 1,000 gone. <laughs> <laughs> I had friends over and we made 1,000 crowns for a party once. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, um, Sylvia caters luau's. And she'll do a thousand of something like that. So crazy. Okay, so I don't know. In my end, that ends up being the inside. That's okay. All right, so we're gonna. I'm gonna start from the beginning. I know Glennis has got all the beginning, but for somebody else who, oh, this is thicker cardstock. This is easier with paper. Trust me, but I'm gonna try this. It's easier with paper because paper bends on those tiny little folds easier. That's why. But I do like having the contrast of color here when you're trying to see the steps. Okay, so we folded that one down. And then we fold the bottom right corner up. We never want to overlap anything or the envelope won't fold right. We just want to bring it up to it. A thousand cranes, a thousand swans. Oh my goodness. Can't imagine. All right. And then we want to fold this over. That's my mark for that one. And then I'm bringing the point to the bottom of this one. That gives me a mark for that one. So I don't have to worry if I'm on the right spot there and try to crease these all down really good because it is cardstock it's a light cardstock but still okay okay once you fold those open it back up and you can leave this right corner folded and it kind of helps you to know that your right corner you're going to pick it up and flip it away from you And now we're going to deal with the left corner. There's already, there should already be a square here. What did I forget? What did I forget? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot a whole step. I forgot to bring this guy down. <clears throat> like we don't have a square there. We didn't make a fold. Bring this, this guy down. I had to stop and get a drink. My throat's a little dry. <clears throat> okay, so fold that top down. Now you can open it up. Pick it up and flip it away from you. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the left bottom corner, we should have a square already folded and um, a line in the middle. So we're going to pick this one up and fold it up to the corner. Again, we don't want to overlap or it won't fold properly. Just bring it up to. Okay. Now, to make the folds, 
I folded this, folded it in half, and folded it a third time. If it's easier for you, just take, I have to turn it around, just take this and fold it back and make, this is pretty, fairly small, so you want to make a very small fold and then go back the other way. Make sure that they all line up. That's what folding and folding and folding it does. It lines it all up for you. And then just keep going back and forth, back and forth. You know, the old accordion fold, back and forth, back and forth. Did that answer your question, Donna? Oh, did Donna have a question about the fold? Bring one down was Dawn's question. <laughs> oh, say that again. Bring what down? Oh, okay. I'll go back to that. Or Don, did did do you get your question answered? Not or do you yet. Want to, okay, okay, I'll show it. I know what she's talking about because I almost skipped a step. It's <laughs> okay, good because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just go back and forth with the accordion fold if that's easier for you. Okay, Dawn says she will wait. <laughs> yeah. Or what I did with this one was just fold it in half, fold it in half, and fold it in half again. And by doing that, you've got all your folds. Then all you have to do when you open it up is fold it forward, fold it backward, fold it forward, fold it backward, fold it forward. Okay, you just create the accordion. But if it's easier for you just to fold it accordion ways, and I did that with the cardstock because I don't want to fold it too many times and have it crack. Okay, so it should be down here. This is the bottom left where we did that. Okay, and now we're going to pick it up again and flip it away from us again, which brings it back to exactly how we had it before. Your accordion should now be in the upper left. I want to first check with Glennis though. Did that answer your question about the full about the um, leaf folds? Before I go on, did that answer Glennis's question about the the leaf folds, the accordion? She hasn't answered yet. Yeah, she's probably busy folding it. <laughs> Again, sound is <laughs> delay. <laughs> No. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. All right. It's this part right here. And this was the trickiest for me too. I'm like, what? Okay. You want to keep this accordion fold all accordion up. And so when I hold it, the accordion is actually underneath. See that? The accordion, uh, accordion is underneath. But I want to hold that right in the center. See, there's a fold. There's a fold right here where we folded that one down. Okay. We're going to fold that one down again, and you're going to let the accordion fold with it. So you basically just folded the accordion in half as you fold this guy down. Did that make more sense, Glennis? So you have to hold this together and let it fold right in the middle of the accordion along that line. It, it should fall right in the center of, of your accordion because there's already a line there. And my point's not, you know, yes, I guess it is. If your point isn't exactly on, no big deal. It'll be close enough. Okay, so hold that, fold it down, let your accordion fold in half with it. So you've got half of the accordion on this side, you've got half of the accordion on that side. Okay, we still have this little guy folded up here. We're gonna fold this one just like we did before, straight over. And now we're adding one new fold, and that's the bottom up. Not all the way, because we want room for the flap to come down. Okay, just got it. Glennis got it. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's that. It's I'm folding the flower in half, and it feels weird. I get that. Yeah. That was the weirdest part for me at the beginning, too. Okay. I need to do this. See, it gets pretty thick with cardstock. Okay, and then when you bring this down, you've got your accordion half and half. Just let your accordion 
fold over to the top. Mm. That's really pretty with colored paper like that. Oh, goodness. I love it. I yes, love yes. the solid paper, but. And then I like to give it just a little bit of a crease there so it lays a little bit nicer, but you know. You know, I'm also thinking that's a flower. You could also, um, for closure, I'm thinking that we could put a um, attach, we could attach a little green string or thread or embroidery floss there and bring that down. How, we, how would we do that? Maybe even bring it down and around and up here. Um, I don't know. We'd have to play with that to see if it just doesn't look dorky. Okay, let me go back and address Dawn's. Cause I know what her, I know what her, uh, what, what she was saying, bring what down. <laughs> okay. I, I, I have to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, this will show you how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to a wedding and there are names on the table, what do you call those things again? Um, the, the place cards. Place cards. Mm -hmm. that, that would make a stunning place. Oh, card. yeah, <laughs> for a garden party or a wedding, or and you could yeah. put something inside that would be a yeah. gift for your oh, guests. What a cute idea! That is so stunning for that. That would that would be that'd be very pretty. Okay, I'm gonna make this six. by eight and three quarters, nine, whatever. Every one of mine's been a little bit different. Some have been closer to eight and three quarters. Some have been closer to nine. So let's see what that is. It's always a guess. Yeah, that's halfway between. So eight and seven eighths. As long as you're in that vicinity, it's going to work. If you're an inch off, it might not work. <clears throat> All right, Dawn, we're ready. Let's, um, let me think here. Yeah, I'm going to let that be the outside. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, right corner to the left side. Diagonally. We want to meet at that corner point exactly. I got to go walk my dog. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> When the dogs call, okay, and then the right bottom up. I, I know you already got these parts, Don. I'm just going to go from the beginning in case somebody new is popping in. Okay, and then we're going to fold the whole thing left. This is my mark right where it's folded. That's where I'm going to fold, <clears throat> and I'm going to make sure that the point is on that line. If I folded it there and the point is on the line, this side will be folded perfectly because there is no mark over there. But using these two marks, that one has no choice but to go where it's supposed to. Okay. Are you with me so far, Dawn? It is cute, isn't it, Glennis? This is one of the most adorable little envelopes <laughs> ever. <clears throat> um, I cut six by eight and three quarters, but mine doesn't look like yours on that first fold. Okay. So six wide, eight and three quarters high. And you folded that one down. Do, does it look like this? Do you have this? We're going to do it step by step, find out where it is. Maybe it has to be just slightly larger than eight and three quarters. We'll find out. Might have all varied between eight and three quarters and nine. But if you're saying that this one doesn't fold right. <clears throat> so Don, give me a yes in chat if you folded this one, the top right corner down and it folded correctly to a point there. Looks like this. I guess it is. <laughs> okay. And then the bottom right corner up. It doesn't have to touch. Uh, you definitely don't want it to overlap. 
you can see that mine isn't like super, super duper close. It's close. It's right there, but it's not. Um, I definitely don't want them to overlap because things won't fold correctly. But fold the right bottom corner up. <clears throat> and then does it look like you have a square in the left corner? I'm going to wait for Don to get the bottom right corner up and tell me if you have a square, if it looks like you have a square in the left corner. Okay, good. Okay. So now we fold this one over and we're going to use this fold right here as our mark to measure to fold it. And then there's nothing over here. We're just folding it. So to make sure I'm folding straight, I'm going to use the point and make sure that the point is on the line. So I'm making sure that this point is on this line. And by doing that, or pretty darn close, then the top will fold at the right spot as well. Otherwise, I'd be folding it like that or like that. I just have a hard time folding those kinds of things straight. OK, so you are you got this one then, Don? OK. Now, this is the one I think that you were talking about. Fold what down? Take your top point, your upper point, and we're, we're going to fold it right here. Just like we folded this one up to meet that one, we're going to fold this one down to meet this one. So it's going to come down like this. Let's see if I can do it in the air. I think I can. I think I can. There we go. Okay, so that top piece, fold it down to meet this one. Now, the point's not going to meet. The point goes out here. The point, though, goes flush with the side. It's going to go past this point, though. So don't worry about that. It's supposed to. So let me burnish that down bit. I get all of these. Okay. So then you should have this. <clears throat> okay. You got it. All right. Yeah. So this one goes longer than that point. All right. So now we're going to open this and we're going to open this one and we're going to open this one and you can leave the bottom right corner folded. It helps keep you in line knowing that you're going the right direction. Okay, now turn it away from you. And if you leave that bottom corner folded, it's easier because then you know if you've done it right, if the, if the top right corner is now folded under. And then in the bottom left corner, we have a square. It's folded this way and that way, and it's fold, folded diagonally down the middle. We're going to take the point, the bottom left corner point, and bring it up to the other point of that square. So we're just folding that square diagonally. It's already been folded one way diagonally. We're going to fold this way diagonally. Now we're folding it this way diagonally. That was fast. Huh. <laughs> okay. okay, so we folded that up diagonally. Everybody seems to be getting it. And Don, I'm not sure if your thumbs up was on the last one or was on this one. Give me another thumbs up or a got it or something or a yes, whatever. If you if you've got the left one folded up like this. You know, you miss one step and, and you, you can't go anywhere. The whole thing is done. So I just want to make sure that everybody's got the steps. Perfect. Okay. Now we're just going to take this half, this little half right here, and we're just going to flip it back and forth accordion style. Huh. 
I got a glass of wine, Laura. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> I was running around like a nut. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, this is cardstock, so it's a little more difficult to fold. I'm trying to make it straight. Straighter the better, but it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a leaf, remember? And nothing's perfect in nature. So if the leaf isn't perfect, it's okay. It will make it look more realistic. Okay, so I'm just folding, flipping it back and forth and going back and forth accordion style. <clears throat> And because this is fairly small, I'm making fairly small folds. My folds are less than a quarter of an inch. The bigger folds you make, the less ridges you're gonna have on your flower. The smaller folds you make, the more ridges, but you don't want too many or it just looks funky. But on this size, a little less than a quarter of an inch fold turns out really beautifully. I can see Margie making little two inch ones. Teeny tinies. They would be very cute. <laughs> it would also be very hard. <laughs> little yes. teeny tinies. Yes. <laughs> But yes, geez, the smaller you get on this one, the more difficult it is. It would be incredibly cute. Yeah. This is so beautiful. I, I know. I love this one. I love this one. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> Margie says, LOL, never. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not in this lifetime. Okay. And just keep folding it until your little point is the last thing you have to fold. Um, this one just happened to the point just perfectly matched up there. And look how they match up all the way. But sometimes my little point goes over a little bit. So I just fold it back and it doesn't go all the way. Seven folds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so your folds might be a little bit bigger than mine, but pretty close. Okay, so we've done those folds and they're on the bottom left corner, right? Now you're going to pick it up and again, turn it away from you. So now you've come back to your bottom right corner that's folded up. And you see why it's easier to leave that bottom right corner fold up because it becomes a marker. You know you're in the right place. You know you've got it the right direction. When you bring it back, you just know you're back to the right place. And now your flower is up here. All your folds are up here on the top. Okay, so we're going to pick it up and you're going to squish your folds together. They're underneath. They're on the back. And I'm holding them. I'm going to go right to the center. We've got this fold right here where we folded it there, remember? we got that fold right there. I'm going to bring it right up to there and I'm going to fold that flower right in the center with it so that I can bring that whole fold over again, like it was. And as you fold it over, as long as your flower comes with it, you can let go of the flower. Okay, so I folded that over and I've got this folded up. I already folded this, so I'm just gonna follow my mark and fold it back again. And then the last thing I'm going to do is fold the bottom up and you can go, you can leave it as far down as you want. I like to make sure that it's at least covered by the flap. So I will bring it up. I don't want to bring it too close because then it gets in the way of the flap. So I might leave a 16 to an eighth of an inch, maybe even a quarter of an inch sometimes. Just depends how I feel. All right. And the, yeah, the thicker your your paper or cardstock, the thicker this gets, this is the hardest spot right here is just trying to get it all laying down because it's thicker paper. So let's burnish that. Let me make sure they all folded in right. They did. Okay, good. 
So we'll burnish that down. And hopefully we're not cracking it. Oops, I'm a little skewampus and I'm a little close to that. So let me work on that again. Let's try that. Okay. All right. And then you're just going to fold the top down. And as you fold the top down, let the flower roll back. And you could actually come here and pinch the flower together, put your finger in there, and kind of make a, I would make a whole crease, just kind of a sort of crease that bends it towards the back. If you want, if you have real stiff paper, like this cardstock, that's a little easier. So when you fold it over. Oh, so pretty. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. Oh my God, that's so pretty. <laughs> it's really washed out on YouTube. I wonder if I have too much light on because it's light paper. Gonna, let me do this and see if this helps at all. Yeah, I really like even this green paper here. It's just got a pretty um, uh, like botanical type of design in it. And then you put that little flower. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. And I'm sure we could think of a ton of different ways to, to um, keep that closed. That is lovely. Lovely. I just think that they, yeah, that they are just adorable, that they are so pretty. So let me put these back together. I do like them on um, solid paper. I think that's very elegant. I could think of so many ways to use these. Mm -hmm. like or a, just an envelope. A million things I could yeah. think. Oh, look, they kind of match. Look at, oh, oh. So, let's see here. Because I haven't put any closures on them yet, they need something to kind of hold them closed. I'll bet, I'm wondering, hmm, I'm going to try this. I can almost hide a closure with a paper clip. Right. Or just, for, just for now. I'm, you know, it's probably not how I would close it. But if I set it down, they just gonna pop up like that. So it gives me a chance to sit them down, look at them, take a picture without uh, having to get a closure on it first. Cause I'm I'm may need to play with a few different types of closures and decide. And how I close it might be determined by how we're going to use it, right? All those different ideas that you've thought of. Right. Right. Oh, my. Oh. I know I love this one. It's so, so pretty. So pretty. I can't get over it. No. I really, I love these. Oh. oh. That doesn't work. How about white? I was looking for a small purple paper clip and the only purple ones I have they're big and they stick out the bottom so let's see if we can do that with white there we go okay let's see we did one with that I like the contrast of color yes I like that there's green in that, and so it really goes nicely. But um, you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this on there. Oh, okay. I think Glennis has sent a photo. Okay, cool. Let me grab it. Let's see what Glennis has got. Oh, super cute. Yep, yep. She closed them up with a paper clip. Yeah. See, even single sided paper looks great. That white flower pops out. But if you took single sided paper and then, like this one, because of the plaid in there, if you um, stenciled it with vintage photo, 
yeah. when you get just a little bit of that, you know, vintagey color coming out to match the plaid. It doesn't need to be something really dark. Um, in fact, I wouldn't do something dark. Look at this cute teeny tiny guy. Adorable. Yes, adorable, Glennis. Yeah, she made several different sizes, you can see. Okay, I'm going to try this black one. I've been wanting to do this. Let me make a mark here. Mark, mark. Okay. All right, let that be the outside. Let's see. Do the labels come off? Or is it just on? It feels, no, nope, it's just part of the paper. All right. All righty then, we're stuck with it. I, I should have looked at that first. I could have grabbed the other end of the paper and cut this end off. Yeah, this is black and gold. And all those ideas you had, Linda, this, I saw this and my mind started going, oh, party, New Year's Eve. What? Yeah. Absolutely. Birthday <laughs> parties, yeah. That'd be fun. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not that I party New Year's Eve, but. I know, we stay home too. <laughs> okay. I, remember, I remember what it was like. I know. <laughs> You know, I just, we've always had the New Year's Eve party at our house because I, I don't want to be out driving exactly. um, New Year's Eve with the people that drink and I just don't. So we've always traditionally hosted the New Year's party at our house. Okay. Oh, this one's going to be pretty. Oh, this is going to be fantastic, actually. Okay. Um, mm. Okay. All right. Can't wait to see the flower. Makes me want to do a bigger one so that I could see more of the flower with the black and gold. Yes, yes. But I'm going to do small folds so I can get more folds in. All right, we've got plenty of time in 10 minutes. That's my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> That's our 10 minute warning. <laughs> Linda, Linda's bedtime is our 10 minute warning. Okay. But you're a pretty early riser, aren't you? I am. I'm a very early riser. Like what time are you usually up? 3 a.m. usually. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me, but up through my whole circadian. Okay. That's <laughs> so that's 1 a.m. my time. Okay, so if I message you at 1 or 2 a.m., you might be inclined to answer. I might, but probably I'm reading. Pro, I would say probably not looking at your phone, though. Or yeah, you, it's or my time. Good for you. Good for you. I love reading. I have to read at least five or six hours a day. I have to. Yeah, uh, that's one of my favorite things to do. And then I make stuff. Cool. <laughs> This is uh this is retirement and widowhood, I guess. <laughs> Love it. Enjoy it. Do whatever you want. I yep. read and make. You're gonna make a bunch of these envelopes, aren't you? I am gonna Tomorrow. make them. Yep, I totally see it coming. I I could I see these as party invitations. I see them as gift like offers. Yep. As you could put little notes in there. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I see I see so many ways to use these. You know, just an elegant little note to somebody, It just a note to say thinking yes. about you or, you know, so sorry for your loss or things like that, but just to elegant it up, you know? Exactly. Just, you know, and make it very pretty so it's not just an envelope. It, 
It's just that extra touch of care, and this is the envelope that does it. As my friends say to me, everything you give me says you love me. Yes. I mean, that, are, yeah, that's awesome. That is so important. But that's exactly what you want, right? You want them to feel that when you give it to them, that you yeah. love them. Yeah. And an envelope like that says, I took a little more time. Even if I made the envelope, I took just a little more time than just making a standard envelope. Because I love you. Because I, I love you. Yep. And and it shows. And and people and people know it. And they it it makes them feel good. It makes us all feel good. We'll make it, does. Me feel good. it does. I appreciate I it. <laughs> just and because we're makers doesn't mean we appreciate it any less. Maybe even more because we know the time that people take to do it. But even people who don't make things say, every time you give me a little gift, it's like a part of your heart. A piece of love. Yeah. Aww. And but, I, you know, that that's that's the most kindest. It's the best compliment you could ever give me. The best compliment ever. Yeah. Like, I don't want you to tell me my art is fantastic. No, just tell me you feel loved, because that's what I'm going for. Exactly. Okay, exactly. there is a tiny little gold. Uh, here we go. OK, I'll shut up now. <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, no, I appreciate the conversation. I don't want to sit here and talk to myself. Why I have you here? <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. It's sophisticated, too. Very sophisticated. Yeah, the black and gold. And you're going to end up, okay, here's how you figure it, guys. If I wanted the, the pattern to be the outside of the envelope, I put that part down. And then whatever you have on this side facing you up is what's going to be your flower. So I might try one with black as the envelope and then the flower, um, the black and gold. Right. I just thought that the black flower on the black and gold would be um, a little more stunning. It is stunning. And I don't think that this is folded up enough there. Yeah, I really like that. Bye, Laura. So glad you could be here. We're all heading out in a couple of minutes anyway, so. Yeah, that is cool. I really like that a lot. Oh, that's beautiful. So you could make these any color you want. Any color you want. Glennis tried a wee one. Hard to get enough folds for a leaf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that is tough, Glennis. Um, you'd have to get teeny tiny folds. And I mean, even on this one, three, well, there's four folds on each side. And that's, you know, kind of just enough. If there's any less, it starts, yeah, the, the smaller they get, the harder that would be. I might try one, though. I don't know. This is to, here we go, winging it, not measuring. We're going to make a wee one really quick. That's about all the time that we have left. Even know if I cut it straight, but let's try it. I might have cut it a little short. Yeah, yeah, I did. That's a little short. Well, there's one way to fix that take off some of the whip. <laughs> okay, now it's getting even weirder. <laughs> I probably wanted to go the other way, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Say that again, Linda. No, I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching. <laughs> By cutting off some of that, now it's getting even weirder. OK. 
Okay, I didn't cut off enough of um, enough of the width. My proportions are off. Uh, let me think here. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um. All right. So if that is three. Three by four and a half. How, get, how much is this? Um, oh, great. It's not even. Are you sure you don't want to turn it the other way? Three. I'm so winging this. Okay. Does my work? Does my work? I'm, yeah, there you go. I'm quickly doing some math. Of, you know, if it's six by nine, what uh, per ratio? What's my ratio? <laughs> you know? Yeah, the math you are doing is is your own mental yeah. math. <laughs> yeah, there's no words for it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do any the first time. I just chopped off what looked good, and yeah. then all right, that's not going to work. So I did uh, quickly did some uh, some ratio. <laughs> we do this all the time. We like okay, a little like it's like speeding up is a word I've never heard before. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, off as I need jerk a little off this side. So I'm a little off this side. I'm gonna uh, make up my own words now for my There you go. You can do that. Happy paper people words. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, 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 like crumbly numbers. 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 <laughs> numbers. Usually words will just come out of somebody's mouth and then <laughs> then we have new happy paper people number words. <laughs> well yeah, but I can't say them on a them. Oh <laughs> you cannot say those words on here. <laughs> I'm really trying very hard not to say <laughs> You're so funny. You're so funny. Oh my goodness. I'm from New Jersey, so what do you expect? <laughs> yeah, the first time Sandy let loose on the live, and I'm like, "Oh, family show, family show!" I just everybody's done it. Everybody's done it, and then you know, and then I I have to laugh, but then I have to remind you, family show. You know, um, Sandy was. Um, oh my goodness! I just had a uh, Navy. Sandy was Navy, so <laughs> she and her husband both. Oh, wow. Navy. So, yeah. Oh. Okay. Wow. There we go. There we go. We got it. We got it. Teeny. Oh, my tiny. Oh, my, oh, my goodness. This is going to be so cute. So flipping cute. Where's my bone folder? It keeps rolling back, and I want it up higher. All right. I need to get this a little bit more little more gooder. <laughs> That's a New Jersey girl. Yes. We like, yes. To, we like to mess with English too. <laughs> little more better this way. Okay, we ready? Got a full ready. <gasps> I have to take off my glasses to be able to see it. It's so tiny. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Oh my god, it's a Barbie purse. <laughs> and you know what I would do? I would spread the leaf things a little farther apart on purpose. It's a Barbie purse. It actually looks like a leaf. If you leave them really tight together, it's not going to. But check that. Oh, look, wait, here. Fingers in the way. Here's a black one. I had a black one just in my hand right there. There we go. Black, 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 black. The paper clip's bigger than the whole envelope. Okay. I'm just going to put it over there so that you can see. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that cute? It's so now, I can actually see the gold there. I don't know if you guys can because it's so I can, small. I can, I can but see. see, because you've only got a few folds. If you take your flower, and the biggest thing is this and this right here, the, the two very ends, and pull it out, spread it out so they're not such a tight accordion. 
it still it looks like a flower then and it still has the folds and then the folds look more like veins but that works it's That's super cute <laughs> i i was too, i was too old to have a bar but my sister had one i never had a barbie either my sister had one also <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, but I wasn't bothered by it at all either. I was too much of a tomboy. I would rather have a bike or a pogo stick or roller skates or something like yeah. that. I, I wasn't much into dolls. I wasn't either. Sitting there playing with dolls was not as fun as going outside and exploring, get, taking on the bike and getting on but the bike. And off. Making <laughs> dolls. Oh, my God. Making dolls. Oh, yeah. You'll have to put some pictures in of some of the dolls you've made. Oh, my God. Fantastic. You know what dolls talk to you when you make them? Really? They do. Like they all do. other art. And they like tell you what they art. want. They tell you what they want in their hair and what they want on their dress. Exactly. And they tell you who they want to be. And Oh, that's cool. And, you know, they'll tell you if you make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, lady. <laughs> hey, lady, you screwed up. I did not want that there. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, it's right. an emotional thing to do. Actually. Yeah, that's true. I love that wee little one. Oh my God, beautiful, Marianne. Cute. Beautiful. Yep. They're fun, aren't they? Which one did you guys like better? This one, where you pop it in the center. Come on, guys. Which one? Or the leaf. And do you want to learn more? origami type uh, envelopes and things like this. Yes, me. Okay. You know, Come uh, on, Linda, does. anybody else? If not, I'll just teach Linda. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you'll all have to uh, live through that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll just do it privately if they don't want to learn. <laughs> Nobody's well, talking. Glennis likes the first one best. And yes, she would like more. Got it. Me too, Glennis. Margie, yes, she would like to learn more. Cool. Awesome. Oldest granddaughter would be totally creeped out listening to that about the dolls talking. She had whatever that doll phobia is. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about the doll phobia. That is not. I do know that some people are scared of or creeped out by dolls, just kind of like clowns and, you know, things like oh, that. Well, I didn't make clowns. <laughs> no, no. I mean, some people, the, the whole thing to clowns, some people have the same thing to dolls. Oh, I'm so sorry you feel that way because <laughs> I don't feel that way. I'm just saying some there is a thing no, that some people do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, just yeah. this granddaughter. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Dawn. I'm Hi. so sorry. You know, I I had a I had a um imaginary friend when I was a child. So maybe yeah. that explains it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe the dolls took the place of the imaginary friend. <laughs> I had to when she came to visit. Oh, oh. But, I, but I do talk to my heart. Don't you talk to your own? Uh, yeah, I, I do. I do. And I talk to myself while I'm making it and all, yeah, all kinds of stuff. And I will say, oh, that's good. Keep that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Keep going that direction. Exactly. Like, yep. is, is there something wrong with us? <laughs> no, everybody's different and it's okay. <laughs> oh man. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. It's Thursday afternoon and we know that you can choose to be anywhere. So we appreciate you being here with us. Um, as usual, we got some good laughs out of this one. We always do. And we appreciate that because with the stress of the world right now, you know, stress of the world always right now is irrelevant. It's always between health and the world and whatever, um, there's always stress and laughter is indeed the best medicine. I think it does help relieve stress. So thanks for being with us today. I do appreciate it. Linda, I appreciate you so much being here with me and let me not talk to myself. I'll think I'm just talking to my art. <laughs> That's yeah, what I appreciate the friends. I have I a conversation with somebody for real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that is very nice. So let's see. It's Thursday. Um, we, the next, oh, let me tell you this. The So our next live will be Monday, 
for Monday Jumpstart, and that is Monday the 22nd. And then Thursday the 25th, we will resume, um, well, it'll be round two of the clearance sales. Um, we took two weeks off, and that gave me an opportunity to regroup uh, the warehouse, organize things, and uh, figure out what is left. And we wanted Candy to have a little time with little Mr. Eric while he's here, because this is his last week here. So family's always more important. So we will um, resume uh, round two of the warehouse clearance sales on Thursday, the 25th, 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time, the same as before, same time as before, um, Mon or excuse me, Thursday the 25th and Saturday the 27th. So that'll be the two. We'll, we're going to try again to hit two a week, which we did for four weeks in a row. We're going to try to hit two again, two a week. Now, the Saturday the 27th is going to be a busy day because that is also the same night that we have Saturday Night Live and Witchy Laura is going to be here with us and a lot of um, Laura's lair. And we are going to make journals to go inside the altered boxes we did. So if you haven't quite finished your altered box, I have not. I need to get on that. Or if you haven't started it, get started. Go back and watch. Those are on Laura's channel. I, you know what? I'm going to grab them and link them to our channel so that you'll be able to get them from Happy Paper People channel as well. Um, so you, you won't have to go search and not know where to find them. But uh, we're making the altered boxes and then um, with Happy Paper People, we are going to teach Laura how to make a book to go inside of them. She's done a lot of the altered boxes and has not made a book. So we're gonna make the books to go inside of it. So I'm excited about that, about hosting them over here. Um, Laura, she's just so sweet. So let me give you an idea of what is still to come in the uh, clearance sales. I was able to go through and kind of uh, pull things together and make a list. Uh, this may be everything, but it's a good start as to what is still to come in the sale. There's lots of fabric, some specialty fabrics, um, just uh wow well, i've got a bunch of fabrics that are like egyptian they're really cool looking i know that there's some holiday fabric um you know halloween and christmas and things like that but um a real variety of fabric um a lot of chipboard die cuts the stamperia ones there's is uh, a lot of stamperia paper and singles minte paper and singles boy there's still a lot of singles to go and i know we all have singles Paint and brushes and some tools still, doilies and linens. Um, there, I did get all the Christmas pulled together. So probably next week, one of those sales will be Christmas. And if we get through all the Christmas, we'll move into something else. But that probably one of those sales will be all Christmas. Stamp dies and embossing folders, 13 arts paper, pion paper, old books. Oh, we've got enough old books to do... Um, two or three, maybe four sales. Um, and I pull, I got to some books that I'd completely forgotten I had. So um, I've got a number of books that are, oh, the reason I got them and, and hung on to them, like coin collector books and stamp collector books so that you can just go through and cut out the stamps and have the stamps for your art or the coins. You can use a hole punch and punch out the coins you know, put a little, um, um, where is it, matte finish on it so that it's protected like a glossy accents, but it's matte so it isn't shiny. Or if you want shiny co coins, put a little extra gloss finish or um, glossy accents, any of those on it, on the coin. And you can turn those into awesome little charms and all kinds of things. So I've got lots of books um, of those. And then lots and lots of old books. Um, color media. We did the mediums. Oh, and I had up here with the mediums, I had the palette knives to um, discount. And they got buried and under the mediums, and I totally forgot. So we'll do those with the color media. Stencils. Everybody's been asking for the stencils. I pulled all the stencils together, and there is a bunch. There's a lot. We may have one entire sale 
on stencils. Or maybe we'll just do an hour of this, an hour of that, an hour of that, and we'll get it more than one day. Um, embellishments, planner supplies, all different kinds. And I still have a wedding dress. So that um, it's already parted out, um, ready to go. So I'm really excited. There's still a lot of fun things um, to come. So um, this next week, I will say that we will do Christmas for sure on one of them. And then on another, um, I think we'll maybe not do the whole thing on books, but we'll pull out some books because I, I know a bunch of you that will want like a coin. And these are cheap, guys. We're, I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of books and they take up a great deal of space. So they are going to get clearanced out cheap. So if you like the coin books, the stamp books, or the old books of any kind, um, we'll do some of those in one of the sales this next week as well. And we'll probably sprinkle some of those in throughout because there's a lot of them and we don't want to just, you know, kill everybody with books. That everybody's not interested in them, but um, they are going to go, they are going to go cheap because they need to go, need the space. Okay, and I will um, make a list of some more of the origami envelopes that um, I have made, and I can think of one right now that will be fun um, to do on mass makes. It's pretty easy to do two on a mass make. We can do one and make it for an hour, and then do a second and make it for an hour. So um, I like that, having, having two there. So thanks for being with us. Love you all. We will see you in the group. Don't forget to post your pictures. Appreciate you all. Thanks again, Linda. Thank you, guys. We'll see you. you.